Hey guys, so I want to run you through some of the heaviest wire parts that I've had in my life. like crushed by that look. I feel like as a professional big wave surfer, I've um, been exposed to some really, really scary situations. And yeah, it's very excited to just share um, some experiences and stories from the front lines of fear. So here we go. The foam ball lifted me up and exploded me so hard and instantly I was put uh, hands and knees pressed down onto um, the coral reef and the wave was just like pressing me down and I remember just like being stuck in the stance like flattened onto the coral reef. So Nias is very well known. Um, it's such an iconic wave, the big barrel with the palm trees behind. However, there is an absolute monster uh, around the corner. And everything changed at Nias when the earthquake hit um, 10, 15 years ago. And it rose the reef so much, it changed the wave at Nias, but also the wave around the corner. Um, it created this incredible big balmy. It's probably the heaviest wave in Indo and um, it's called Sabatu. The scary thing about this wave is there is, uh, during that earthquake, the reef was r raised out of the water. Um, so right in front of the wave, in front of the takeoff spot, about um, a foot out of the water um, is this coral ledge and it's super sharp and it's like this long table all the way to the shoreline so when you're paddling into a wave out there you know that if something goes wrong uh, you've probably got one wave and then the next one's going to put you very close to that wall of coral reef it is terrifying the wave itself uh, it's like a deep water slab there's uh, bombies out to sea that that refract the energy um, and it sends these big peaks in at um, this long slab of reef and uh, it breaks in many different spots. It's like these massive teepees that come in and they unload the bottom of the wave, drops away, and it delivers huge barrels. I've seen waves out there that are probably 18 foot um, and absolutely square. And the thing is that nobody surfs there. Um, every time I've been out there, um, it's only one or two guys in the water. I just remember uh, being at Nias, standing on the rocks with a, with a bunch of other guys on the point at Nias, and the waves were six to eight foot and absolutely firing at Nias. And I said to the guys like, hey, we're gonna have epic waves of gotcha, but around the corner, there could be something life changing. There could be something out there that we will never forget. Um, so, so Alex Gray and myself, we took the walk around the corner. And we knew there was a boat that was gonna follow us and the rest of the guys went out to Nias. Alex and I paddled off, off the rock shelf we got into the lineup and, and the, the boat was already out there and they said that the waves were like eight to 10 foot. Um, and I remember looking at the, uh, it's a very difficult wave to judge how big it is, especially because there's no one out there. And I remember looking at it and I thought, geez, this looks much bigger than eight to 10 foot. Um, and as we paddled into the lineup, we started to see that it was way bigger. It was huge, it was scary. These big blue mountains of water, these big peaks that were just marching in and unloading on the reef these huge perfect barrels waves of a lifetime over and over again and i just knew i just if i got one of those it would be the way of my life um alex didn't waste any time he took off on a wave that closed out on him he snapped his leash and he got straight back into the boat and um i was sitting in my normal spot out there i've surfed out there a bunch of times and the horizon went dark and the set started marching in and i just found myself paddling further and further and further out to sea i was sitting way out and i just remember paddling over these big blue like thick thick mountains of water and watching these things fray train along the way the reef and spitting their guts out 
And I just thought like, I better be, it's really, really dangerous out here. I'm so far away from help and uh, I need to pick my ways really carefully because the chance of something bad happening um, is, is very, very high. <laughs> um, so yeah, sitting far out all alone and watching these incredible waves go by, another big set marched in. And the first one was super doubled up and it moved close in, closer in and I kind of followed it a little bit. And as that wave went by and I went over it, I just saw the next wave was this beast, a 15 foot plus kind of peeking up with a double up inside it. And I just remember how groomed it was. It was like that Indo light offshore blue water, but the thickest, scariest 15 foot chunk of water coming straight to me. And I looked at this thing and I said, okay, this is the way of my life. If I make the drop, this is going to be the way of my life. I actually ended up paddling a little bit deeper because I wanted to be behind the peak. Um, and I paddled in and I was watching the bottom of the wave, watching to see if it was going to drop away, that if it was going to actually let me into it. Um, and I paddled in with all my might. And I remember leaning forward over the edge and the wave let me in. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm making the drop. And as I bottom turned, I looked up and I saw that the wave had stretched super far down the line. I try to like pump up, get as much speed as I could into the tube. And as I pulled up into the barrels in this massive room, it was like this huge barrel and I could see the boat in the distance and I knew that I was not going to make it. And I was in a very, very bad place. Um, the, the foam ball lifted me up and exploded me so hard. And instantly I was put uh, hands and knees pressed down onto um, the coral reef and the wave was just like pressing me down and i remember just like being stuck in the stance like flattened onto the coral reef um i came up another really big wave landed on me went under and i had about two or three that like really smoked me and just the thing to remember out here all i was wearing was a t-shirt and a pair of bodies i didn't have any inflation or anything or, or flotation um and after i just started to, to think to myself oh my gosh like if there's another wave uh, I'm going I'm going up onto the rock, rock ledge. It's like my worst nightmare. Um, and I came up and there was another another really big wave and the wave smoked me. Um, and I remember getting up on my board, uh, 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 climbing back onto my board, another 10 foot foamy coming straight at me. And I started to realize, sure, but I'm actually on top of the ledge. And I started like trying to uh, duck dive these 10 foot foamies because I was on top of this ledge. And I could I could see the, the 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 suctions and the swirls all around me, showing me that I was on in very very shallow water, um, and I was just going to keep my board under me no matter what. I didn't care if my board got absolutely grated. I was just going to keep my board between the reef and myself. Um, I got I duck dived like two or three like these ten foot foamies, just duck dive and holding on and just kind of waiting to get smashed into the reef. Fortunately, I didn't. Um, after that last wave uh, about the fifth or sixth wave of the set it started to, the, the, the water started sucking back out to sea and i remember being like in this river uh going back out to sea and suddenly these two big coral heads popping up in front of me and i got sucked like down below sea level in between these coral heads um into the, the deep water and um fortunately it sucked me out uh, into the channel and i remember paddling back to the boat and uh, the guys were like, oh my gosh, like that was, that thing was insane. <laughs> and I, and I, I was shaking. I've never actually had that after wipeout. I had so much adrenaline in my, flowing through my body that I was shaking. I was bleeding all over my arms and my knees. That was like one of the heaviest experiences of my life. And I'm so glad that I'm still um, alive and pretty unscathed considering the, the magnitude of, of how heavy that situation was. And then, um, yeah, we got back to the shore. And fortunately, um, Brad Masters was out there. Um, so he's since uh, passed away. But we did, yo, we did a lot of amazing work together. And it was so special to be on that trip with him. Um, and I remember those times like so amazingly. He got some epic shots. Brent Bielman, Brian Bielman were also out there. So I was out there with like some of the top still, stills photographers in the world. Um, and Mike Nolte, he captured it all on footage. Um, and yeah, I remember seeing the photo when I when I, I was just lying, got back to land and I was, 
I was lying there like on the floor, I had a mattress on the floor um, and I was like still just overwhelmed with like the adrenaline and stuff and patched up all my wounds and, and Brent and Brad came and showed me the photos and it, I looked like a little ant on that wave and uh, later on um, I think it was Tracks Mag or one of the one of the Australian magazines said like it was the biggest wave ever paddled into in Indonesia so incredible experience but wow that was scary and that wave just keeps calling me back every time I've been there something amazing has happened it's so misto every time I surf it I'm pretty much by myself and it keeps calling my name because I know that the best wave of my life is waiting to be ridden out there and I can't wait to get back there to surf that wave.